So I started the group October 7th of 2020. My son died in January of 19. So there was over a year and a half time gap before I started my nonprofit. And really it came from a lot of prayer, a lot of prayer. That's all I did in the beginning after my son died. Church, Bible studies, went to Israel on his one year angel anniversary for two weeks. Why? To be closer to God. Why did I want to be closer to God? Because my, he's got my son and I want to make sure I'm getting in them pearly gates. So really it was lots of prayer. And, you know, I would pray, God, what are my gifts? What are my talents? Show me what to do with fentanyl. I knew I wanted to do something. I didn't know what to do, but I had to do something. And I kept saying, uh, uh, God, what? I'm just a cleaning lady. Like, I, I'm i just a cleaning lady. Like, I barely graduated high school. I hated school. I didn't go to college. But I've always had a big mouth. And I'm going to tell you, I did hear from God. And he said, you got a big mouth and you're going to use it. And this is God's group, Lost Voice of Fentanyl. The days of crying behind closed doors are over. That's the slogan. Because <laughs> I'm not going to sit in my bedroom and cry anymore. I'm going to get loud. I'm going to get in your face. And I took it to Washington, D.C. And honestly, that's really, I think, how the group became big because I had a rally in D.C., and I told them all I was going back the following year. So every year it gets a little bigger, and we're doing God's work. I'm April Babcock. I'm the founder of Lost Voice of Fentanyl. We are here today in front of the White House. As you see, all these families have lost their kids to fentanyl poisoning. This is not an overdose crisis. This is the poisoning of American crisis. We want our government to do their job and protect Americans. We advocate for change. We write letters to our politicians, which eh, we don't like doing, but we have to write letters. We try to get, you know, we support, there's so many parents out there that have their own nonprofits and they're, or they don't have a nonprofit and they're doing this or doing that. We get behind a lot of people. Lost Voices of Fentanyl, we're in a coalition with Prosperous America, the National Council of Textile Organization, Oh, it's the uh, um, police, National Association of Police Officers. And then they decided to bring in a bunch of fentanyl groups because this coalition is to close the de minimis loophole. So we're working with that right now because um, fentanyl is still pouring into our country through the mail. And nobody's really talking about it. Everybody's talking about the southern border, which we 100% talk about that all the time, securing our border. Like, right now, the Mexican cartels have operational control of the border. And if you don't think so, then I don't know what rock you're living under. And you don't want to face reality. Because the truth is, the Mexican cartels do have operational control of that southern border. So we want them labeled a foreign terrorist organization because honestly, they should have been labeled that 20 years ago. We've never had poppy fields here in the United States. They've been flooding our country, getting Americans dependent on drugs for a long time. It's time for that to end. Kill them. They deserve to die. Let God, sort, God can sort them out. God knows every heart, but they should not be allowed to breathe. China, they're the head of the snake. All the precursor chemicals come from pharmaceutical labs in China. The China Select Committee just had a hearing last month exposing to pretty much the entire world that China is deliberately killing Americans with illicit fentanyl and other crazy synthetic chemicals coming straight out of straight out of their pharmaceutical labs and they get tax write-offs, tax incentive, tax breaks, grant money. Alyssa Fentanyl really needs to be labeled a weapon of mass destruction along with the cartels, foreign terrorists. So our government has a bunch more tools in their toolbox to actually shut these operations down. Go after the money, follow the money, do your job. Our government's corrupt. Well, you can join our movement. You can come to our national rally. You can donate. Um, 
you can support us. Pressure your politicians. Honestly, that is the main thing because they're the ones who can change laws. We have a website, lvof.org. We have free awareness materials that are in our files on our Facebook group where anybody can print them out themselves. There's not enough of us fighting, really. I mean, there's a lot of people now. I think more than anything, what I do, I think I inspire some some families that are affected by this, that have lost a child. I think I inspire people just to get up and do something. And I, I say, everybody can do something and know something is too small because I, we all can't do everything. I don't go into schools teaching on the dangers of illicit drugs and fentanyl, but I know a ton of other moms and dads that are going into schools with, you know, that have nonprofits and that's great. That's wonderful. But, you know, we can't all do everything. So I hold a national rally. That's the biggest thing I do. And I just put it out there in, in your face. We go in front of the White House every year. Our Facebook platform is our biggest platform. We have 33, 33.5 thousand members right now. So, but if you really think about it, that's nothing. You know, people say, oh, your group is big. And I'm glad it's growing because we need it to grow, but it's really, really tiny. When you think about, we're losing over 100,000 Americans the last three years in a row, like, this is complete, sure insanity. And most people just don't know we exist. I mean, our biggest platform is on Facebook, unfortunately, but that's where a lot of people go. And I guess I'm old. I'm not on Instagram. I'm not on Twitter. I did join a new platform called Wimkin, and it is so close like Facebook. I'm so excited. I'm hoping within a year and a half, I can get most of my members from Facebook moved over to that platform because really, I think eventually I will probably be deactivated on Facebook. They put me in Facebook jail all the time. Right now, every time we approve a post, there's a message right there. All the moderators and admins of my group get warning because if we share certain things, they're gonna deactivate our group. We, I've been in Facebook jail all the time <laughs> like and since i'm the creator of the group that means we're red flagged they said we have a limited visibility so you know i really want to know if i guess Zuckerberg, he must be getting paid by cartels or something i i really believe that drug dealers are all over they uh, cartel members they have facebook accounts why is that allowed and i know a lot of too many people that get put in Facebook jail for talking about fentanyl. So there's something really evil going on there. I actually just got a text this morning from a woman named um, Mary Starr. She has a podcast, Awake to Truth. She was just, I don't know, shut down off of um, YouTube. Um, you know, this is crazy. The censorship, it's real. And every American should be concerned about that because if they're censoring... I don't know, it's more conservative speech, to be honest, but it could be you next. Even if you don't have a dead loved one to fentanyl, eh, unfortunately, going at this rate, you probably will soon. I hate saying that, but that is just the sad reality. Like, we are fighting so hard for the living. We don't fight, we fight in honor of our kids, but our kids are dead. We're not fighting for them, they're dead. We fight for the living to live. So I really think every American should hop on board with that. This is not a red or blue issue. It's a red, white, and blue issue. It doesn't matter. And you know, you've heard the stories. It doesn't matter, rich, poor, first babies are dying, experimental first time. This black, white, Hispanic, it doesn't matter. Everybody's dying. Everybody should be on our bandwagon because our are people just gonna be okay with these poisons flooding 
America forever? Are we just going to be okay with Alyssa Fentanyl and all these crazy chemicals coming out of China killing our people like indefinitely? There's got to be an end and there can be an end. Our government can do it. They can shut it down. They can shut China down. They're not doing it. Fox News has covered it. Newsmax has covered it. Real America's Voice has covered it. CNN, MSNBC, their viewers are no different than our viewers. They're losing their children to illicit fentanyl. And they need to really step up and start listening to us families and hearing our stories and hearing the crisis. Like, they need to cover this story. We need all the support we can get. We need everybody to pressure their politicians. I mean, I live right outside of Baltimore. Um, Brandon Scott, the mayor and the new governor, Baltimore has the highest death toll per capita in the entire nation for fentanyl deaths. And they haven't even said the word. There's been no PSAs, no nothing. I mean, the Maryland Department of Health, they have some good commercials in the state of Maryland. That I will say. But nobody even watches TV anymore. Who is seeing these commercials? I like the commercials, but it's not good enough. We need our sheriffs in Maryland. We need the governor of Maryland and definitely the mayor in Baltimore to start warning their constituents about Elisa fentanyl. We need we need to go back to, you know, just say no. But it's worse than that because now you just you die.